So we're incredibly fortunate to have um, the person who I think is the perfect curator for this project, um, and she's going to be speaking to all of you shortly. Um, she combines um, a real passion and artistic creativity with um, deep credentials and expertise in women's human rights, and specifically Muslim women's human rights. Her name is Samila Ali, and she has spent the past 15 years of her career as an artist as an, and as an activist addressing myths and stereotypes specifically around Muslim women. She co-founded the Muslim American feminist organization, The Daughters of Hajar, and she's the first Indian Muslim woman fiction writer to be published in America. Her critically acclaimed novel, Madras on Rainy Days, received both national and international awards. She's worked with the US State Department as an American Muslim ambassador to Europe, and she's been named both a Muslim leader of tomorrow and as one of 100 extraordinary Muslim women, which I can attest to. <laughs> so it's my pleasure to welcome Samina Ali, who will tell you more about the Muslim exhibition. Thank you, Claire. Good afternoon. It's thank you all for coming today. It's nice to see so many friends and contributors and also new people that I haven't met before, but I'm hoping to meet many of you in the reception that's to follow. It's been about a year now since I became curator at for the exhibition. And in that year, I have found myself asking people repeatedly the same question. What is the first image that comes to your mind when you think of a Muslim woman? Inevitably, whether I'm speaking to graduate students at a prestigious university or to journalists from around the world or even to the general public, I get answers that are strikingly similar. Veiled, Arab, submissive, victim. As Claire mentioned in her introduction of me, I've been working both on a national and international level with Muslim issues for well over a decade now. And I can say that, unfortunately, the image of a Muslim woman hasn't changed. The answers I get today to this question are the same that I got when I asked this question soon after 9-11. Worse, the stereotype, the stereotypes that were emerging soon after 9-11 seem to have become cemented in people's minds. So that what was once a stereotype of a helpless Muslim woman has now become synonymous. Muslim woman has become synonymous with the stereotype. That global context is one of the many reasons why this exhibition is so timely and so necessary. Despite the belittling stereotypes about them, Muslim women globally are making great contributions to their community, whether through their art, their writing, or through their activism. This exhibition is revolutionary for many reasons, but one of the reasons it's re revolutionary is because it takes all of the women, leading women from around the world, and puts all of their efforts onto one platform. The video that you just saw highlights just some of the incredible women who are included in this exhibition from Dr. Shirini Badi, who is the first Muslim woman to receive the Nobel Peace Prize, to Laila Bakhtir, who is the first American woman to translate the Quran into English. And while it's true that this exhibition is courageously confronting stereotypes to magnify the power, creativity, and visibility of Muslim women around the world, it is equally doing the important work of confronting the stereotypes, attitudes, and laws about Muslim women's lives in Muslim countries. Whether it's through patriarchy, politics, power, or plain 
exploitation of Islamic law, Muslim women's lives in some parts of the world have been unfairly diminished, and unfortunately by fellow Muslims. This exhibition shines a light on these dark issues in hopes of supporting those courageous women who are leading the movement for change. Women like Fozia Kufi, who is running for president in Afghanistan in 2014 of Afghanistan, a place where not too long ago, under Taliban rule, girls were not allowed to go to school. In this place, Fozia Kufi is running for president. In our recent interview, Fozia Kufi and I honestly discussed how her ambitions have made it so her life is regularly under threat. Unfortunately, her father was killed. Her husband was killed. Fozia Kufi is raising two daughters on her own while running for president under daily threat. Why is she doing this? I wanted to know. She told me, losing my life doesn't scare me. What matters more is that my daughters and the women and girls of my country can live fully realized lives. I will give my life, if I have to, to improve theirs. Courage, tenacity, strength. That's what I think of when I think of Muslim women. And through this exhibition, I hope that all of you in this room and everyone outside this room can see beyond the stereotypes to that reality. Thank you.